How's it going? Thank you all for coming for today's Q&A here at the MGM Grand. Um, some of you guys know how this works. There's going to be microphones set up uh, right there and right there. So if you have questions for today's guest, I suggest getting in line now. It's going to be really busy. I know a lot of you are going to have questions. Don't ask for tickets or pictures or autographs. Sorry. Um, so please be respectful. Let us hear. It was a little difficult the last Q&A. So if you have a question, just make sure that the crowd is a little quieter for us. But let's take a look at the package and get a closer look at today's guest. Some of my competitors have called me a joke. But when we are in there, face to face, man to man, it's, it's no joke anymore. When it was my UFC debut, people are saying I have not fought UFC caliber opponents. When it was my second bout, I had not fought seasoned strikers. Big shots by McGregor. Third belt, I had not fought Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belts with knockout power. When it was my fourth fight, I had not fought top five opponents. It is my fifth fight, and people have accepted. I am the guy who will obliterate the whole division. In my mind, the title is already won. It's already around my waist. I'm simply eliminating contenders. All right, he's undefeated in the UFC, the number one contender to the featherweight belt, the notorious Conor McGregor. Hello, everybody. Hey, Conor. So, um, we're starting a little late today because Connor was finalizing a deal. Do you want to tell everyone about that? We have the fight date for McGregor Aldo, the biggest fight of the year. When's that happening? Saturday, July 11th, International Fight Week. I'm going to rip that Brazilian's head off. That fight is happening right here at the MGM Grand. You heard him July 11th, UFC 189 International Fight Week. Connor, it happened. How excited are you? I am calm, composed, and I am ruthless. This is just another, another man in my way. All right, let's start this Q&A. He's fired up. We got a huge fight coming July 11th. I know all of you guys have questions. So many in line already. Let's start over here. Connor. It's a known fact that Aldo has cardio problems, correct? Would it interest you in beating him up for five rounds instead of taking his head off clean in two? Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel he cannot finish his dinner, let alone finish an opponent. So if it goes to five rounds, which I don't think it will, I will be more than ready. You know, it just takes one clean connection from me and it's done. The facts speak for themselves, so that's the way I feel it will happen. I will go out, I will throw my shots, I will break him down bit by bit, and he will break. One more question. How much do you weigh right now? Right now I'm about 170, I'd say. Fair. Nice right. question. Go ahead. Hey, Connor, welcome to Las Vegas. Over here. Yeah. Hey, uh, you said you could beat any man alive, so you're going to try to step up after you go through the division and uh, take on Anthony Pettis? Yeah, definitely. I will uh, I definitely have my eyes on that lightweight division 100%. I will take that featherweight belt, and then I will move up 100%. My fiance is from Ireland, so, man, I'm cheering for you. Thank you so much. Is the weight cut something that you think about a lot? Like, do you try to stay low because you are a featherweight fighter? Yeah, definitely. The weight, the weight is uh, it's tough. You must, stay, you must stay right. You know, you can't slack off. You must keep the body weight down. And, um, you must stay lean and you must stay in the gym, so that, that is what I do, but definitely I have my eyes on on all divisions. My training partners are, are welterweights, 170 pounds, Gunnar Nelson, Cahill Pendred, phenomenal welterweights I train with day in, day out, so I have no problem uh, going right up to welterweight, to be honest, so uh, we will see. I am young, I'm just, I'm 26 years old, and we will see what opportunities present themselves, but I am here to fight, and 
when opportunities pre present themselves, I will take it. Possibly three divisions. All right, I like it. Go oh, look at that red suit. You really got dressed up today. Well, wow. <clears throat> they say uh, the word on the town is just the best dressed guy in the UFC, so I figured out of respect, I you know wear my favorite suit. But you look good, brother. You well, look good. Oh, and red shoes. Not many people oh know, God. but three men died making this me this beautiful Italian wool suit. And I gotta say, I'm having a hard time holding these alligators down. May they rest in peace. <laughs> but let's get realistic for one moment, shall we? You gotta put yourself in the fans' perspective here. You know, Frankie Edgar, Chad Mendez, Mark Homick, these were great men who said they were gonna accomplish something now you say you're gonna do. So, putting yourself as, you know, I said in our perspective, what are you gonna do? What do you have and why should we believe you? Um, yeah, you know, that, that's actually a good question, you know, but I am a different uh, animal than, than Frankie and Chad. They, I, I believe personally, they sh both of those competitors should be 135, as I feel Aldo, has made a career out of has made a career out of beating short wrestlers who are not the best on the feet. So now it is a different ball game altogether. Now you're coming in against a guy with long reach range that's going to come straight from the bell straight for you. So it is a completely different contest. So all you got to do is look and realize that it is not the same fight. All right. Well, best of luck then. Cheers. Thank you, sir. Oh, that outfit <laughs> over here. Yeah, Mr. Conor, Go Conor O'Gregor. With the beer in your hand. With the hand. beer, so a Brazil t-shirt, whatever. A Brazil hey, you know t-shirt and a can hey, of beer. Hey, Th man, this is hey, gonna be a good what? question. Hey. hey, my name is Dylan Duarte. And me and my friend, Michael Garcia, really wanna know, what round do you, do you pick Jose, Jose Aldo to finish you in. Since you're such a good guy at predicting your fights, what, what round That's do it. you predict Jose Aldo to finish you in, brother? Uh, no, Me no, no, no. and my Don't... friend Michael Garcia really- Get that Drew TD out here. Let him answer, we got it, thank you. He got there in the end, God bless him, God bless you. Maybe Michael Garcia can ask the question again. So, thanks. <laughs> we'll go over here. <laughs> um, speaking about dress, normally I'd wear a shirt, but for the king, I thought I'd put on a suit and bow tie. My man, that. you look good, brother. Okay, my question is, about two years ago, I saw an interview with you, and you talked about not having a pot to piss in. But still, you were being fed grapes like a king. So, even though you've won all five of your contests in the UFC, I think your biggest accomplishment is where you've come in the two years. So my question is, how many pots do you have to piss in now? I have a few pots to piss in. The suite that I'm staying in, in, in the Red Rock, when you step towards the toilet, it lifts by itself. I don't even have to lift the seat anymore. When you sit on it, the seat is preheated. And when you're finished, there's a little button that cleans you, dries you and everything. So that's where I'm at right now. But thank you. It has been a phenomenal two-year journey. And I am grateful for the support. Thank you so much. Can we get a, can we get a shout out for our, our Uncle Frank, please? She always a shout out to Uncle Frank. You know that. <laughs> Go ahead. I feel like I'm learning so much about you already. <laughs> Go on. Hey, Connor, can you give a shout out to the People's Republic of Cork? Of course I can. I love the fucking, I love the Irish. The city of Cork is a phenomenal city. Can you also uh, tell us who your top three uh, all time sporting Irish legends would be? And I mean, one's got to be from Cork. One's got to, <laughs> well, it's hard to go against Roy Keane, you know. He, he, competed at the highest level and won medals at the highest level in football. Um, again, Katie Taylor is another one, Olympic champion. I mean, she is putting the man to shame in the boxing game. Um, who else do we, like? do we like? I'll tell you, Robbie Keane is another one. You know, he's the highest uh, goal scorer in Irish history. He's an, another legend. So there's three legends right there. I'll tell you what, we have some great sports people in our country. Uh, I am honored to be uh, representing my country on, on, on a new stage, a stage that we have not been on before. Last point. Um, we know there's a curfew in Crow Park and there's issues there. How about going back to the day of Eubank and Collins in Parky Cueve for 2017? 
That, that, that is interesting now. Who, who knows what, what, what is around the corner? The stadiums are lined up. There was the issue with the curfew, and it would have it cancelled out the pay-per-views. And now that I am on the pay-per-view cut, I'm, I'm, I'm going with the pay-per-view. So we're going to do July 11th here, International Fight Week in Las Vegas. <laughs> and then we'll bring it to maybe Crow Park or Parkney Cueve or, or wherever. One of the stadiums in Ireland, I will defend the belt, I feel. Can I get a photo afterwards? Of course you can. Thank you. Did I not say no photo requests? <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, me? Yeah. All right. Connor, I don't have a question, but could you sing us a song? Please. The, the I, need, I need a few of what you had to been having to sing a song, yeah? Yeah, come on. Oh, those beers and I'll sing you a, a song. A little bit. Think that's a, a no. Think what? that's a no. Sorry. Oh. But I'm sure they're, they're serving beers, so you can go get one of those. It'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> over here. Connor, how's it going? Hello, sir. How are you? I'm good. I'm great, man. The um, Irish flag looks good on you. Thank you very much. Um, before I ask a question, big congratulations on Boston. An Irish radio station said statistically that the Monday after your fight was the biggest requested Monday of annual leave in the country this fucking year. <laughs> I love it. And we will it. be back in the summer to see you lift that fucking belt. Yes, yes, we will. I love it. Thank you so much. Um, so my question is, myself and my brother have been following Nick Diaz for about six or seven years now, and we've been out here to a few of his fights. And when you got signed up by the UFC, we saw some comparisons in the way you fight and your attitude towards the, the game. And I just wondered, um, before you signed for the UFC, what was your opinion of Nick Diaz, and did you aspire in any way of his game, and what's your opinion of him? I, I, love, I love Nick Diaz. You cannot be a fight fan. You cannot be a fight fan and not love Nick Diaz. He comes to fight. He comes with his hands up. He, he never takes a back step. And that's why this is a phenomenal contest. You've got Anderson Silva, one of the pound for pound greatest of all time, making that comeback after that injury. You know, it's, he's looking to make a statement. And then you've got Diaz coming forward that does not take a back step. I have to take myself out of fan mode sometimes and just be grateful that I am actually going to be ringside to watch this phenomenal fight tomorrow. So it is going to be something special, I feel. Brilliant, thanks. And uh, episode one of the documentary. Fabulous last week. Thank you so much. Episode Thanks. two, we hit Vegas, we sign a new contract. It's a good episode, handling business, I titled it. See you in the summer with that belt. Thank you. Who do you think wins the main event? Um, you know, it's a, it's a hard one to call, and since I am not getting paid to be an analyst, I would not give a prediction like that, but I think it's going to be a great... I think the fans win. You get to see Anderson come back, you know. How, it, that was less than a year ago that injury happened, and look, he's looking smooth, he's kicking well. I mean, that, I take inspiration from that. And then, of course, it's hard not to get fired up when Nick Diaz is around. You know, he comes to fight every time. The fans, I feel, win this fight. All right, good answer. PC, go ahead. Hi. First of all, I want to say, Megan, you do a great job. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Okay, That's very sweet. Thank you. And, Connor, one of the reasons why people love hearing you talk, it's the way you describe stuff. When you describe stuff, you describe it in great detail. When you describe movement, it's great detail. So, can you give us a Conor McGregor explanation about Anderson Silva's movement? What makes him so good? What do you see in his movement? Sell some more pay-per-views right now. Do you want to work in our marketing department? <laughs> yeah, I get, Anderson, Anderson is as fluid as they come. And one thing, as fluid and as creative as they come, you know, a lot of, a lot of people talk about speed and, and power and, and toughness. These are things that qualities that people talk about a, a fighter but not a lot of times you hear people talk about calmness or creativity and all you have to do is look at Anderson and that's the definition of calmness you know to be in that pressure bubble inside the octagon and to still have that that calmness to be creative and, and work shots that have not been seen before so Anderson is phenomenal his movement is fluid and that does it's the reason why he is probably the greatest of all time thank you and also, guys, I just want to say congratulations on your last fight. I know you like finishing fights fast, but I could have seen 10 rounds of that. The way you moved so patient, it was brilliant. So congratulations. Thank you so much. I, and I am only warming up. I feel I am only, I've only shown 50% of what I'm capable of. Okay. Well, no one can deny the decisive successes you've achieved in the octagon. 
What portion of your training camp do you find yourself devoting to visiting the Blarney Stone to achieve the high volume output that us fans have grown accustomed to hearing? Sorry, one more time? Yeah, I, I, I heard Blarney Stone, I didn't know where that fit. Say it again. I said, your successes, they're very decisive. But what portion of your training camp do you devote to visiting the Blarney Stone yeah. to achieve the high volume output that us fans have grown accustomed yeah, I to? Don't, I don't know, I don't believe, you know, for me, I don't believe in look. You know, I, I create my own look through preparation and through dedication in the gym. So rather than whoop and kiss a stupid stone, I'll, I'll, I'll kiss, kiss the gym, you know, kiss the gym door. I, that's, that's what I do. You've earned it all, thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, Connor. Uh, congrats on your last fight against Dennis Seaver. I want to ask you a question. Uh, you were a featherweight and a lightweight champion in cage rage. Uh, how do you see yourself fighting at 155 stylistically compared to uh, fighting at 145? Yeah, I, um, I feel the preparation is different. You know, in the lead up to a featherweight contest, the training must taper at a certain time and you must focus on the diet. Definitely as I grow 155, will be more comfortable to get here, will be less, of, less stress on the body and the training and preparation will be different. I feel maybe I will be looser and faster, but yet not smaller either. I'm 5'9 with a 74 inch reach. Um, the current champion is 5'10 with a 72 inch reach, so we are around similar size. So I, I feel comfortable that 155 will be in my future. A lot of people say during fight week that there's two battles. The first one's with the scale, and then obviously the second one's in the octagon. Would you agree with that? Is it a battle to make weight? I don't think, unless you are in that, unless you are in it, you cannot realize how, how tough it is for, for the athletes to make weight. But I think there is, for me, there's two battles, but the, the, the battle is not inside the octagon. For me, when you step inside the octagon, it's almost like a relief. It's like a sigh of relief because you leave everything else behind. You leave all the other stuff. The weight cut is gone. The, the two battles for me is the, one is the weight cut and two is the media obligations. They are the t two battles. The octagon is, it's done. I am free. I get to do what I set out to do. So Have fun and get paid. Exactly. <laughs> nice. Right. First of all, Megan. Oh, geez, yes. Have you ever thought about being a USC ring girl? Because you're a lot sexier than all these ring girls walking around. Smooth. <laughs> thank you, but no, thank you. That's very sweet. Well, you should be. Second of all, Connor, <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend. Anyway, uh, you know the re you know uh, the Stay Ready brand, the stick man? Reebok should sign that because that's your brand and that's what you're known for. And I've got the tattoo. Don't worry, my friend. That, that is in the works. That logo's in the air at the minute, but don't you worry. That, 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 you're, you are right. That is my brand. It was a successful brand. We, we sold a lot of uh, merchandise. The fans got behind that logo, and it is my logo, and it will be coming to Reebok. You best believe that. Yeah, tell Uncle Frank to get the paycheck out. I'm <laughs> done. Bye. <laughs> oh, yes. Q&As are the best. Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, my buddy is fighting his first amateur fight for a title tomorrow night. I just want to get a shout out for him tomorrow. Yeah, tell him best of luck and most of all have fun. He's very influenced. He's fighting at 145. And uh, I really want to see you knock out Chad Mendez. What do you think about him? Yeah, I believe Chad. You know, when I get through Jose and when I take that belt, when that belt gets clicked around my waist, there's a question that the fans want answered. The wrestling question. Can, how can he deal with the wrestler, you know? So Chad is in that bracket. Chad, Frankie, Ricard Ricardo to a lower scale. You know, I will, I will get around to each and every one of them. I said, one by one, I will take them all out. Now we have uh, Jose next, but there are still many behind him. Thank you. Good luck. I actually want to touch on that. Obviously, Jose is next, July 11th. Uh, but between Ricardo and Frankie and Chad, who do you think is the strongest mixed martial artist in the group? Um... I'd say Frankie, you know, he's got, he held the lightweight belt and he, he's been successful at featherweight, but still I feel he should be a 135er. Coming up against me, it, it would not be a good night for him. Um, Chad is a wrestler with an overhand right. Um, also should be a 135er. Lamas is, is rubbish, really. He should be cut. Fair enough. 
Connor, uh, I was right. Uh, Connor McGregor. I was going to uh, ask, what do you think is uh, Jose Aldo's biggest flaw that you were going to pick apart? Um, for me, if I look at if I was to speak on Jose's skill, I would I would say his boxing. I don't feel his boxing is is great. I feel his shot selection is poor. I would class him as an intermediate at best. Um, I feel his kicking game is, is overrated as well. He's got, he's got a good right low kick, but his, 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 uh, he cannot kick high. Um, I, don't, I, don't feel, I don't feel there's anything special about him. He's just another body that moves the way they all move that I will shut down. All right, thank you. The King, go ahead. Hey, Conor McGregor, it's awesome to be able to ask you a question right now. I can't believe you're doing the Q&A. I plan to come here back in November, and this is like the coolest thing about the whole event right now. Thank you so much. I am grateful for that. Thank you, sir. Um, but my question was, was there a moment, and when was it that you knew you were the baddest 145-pounder on the planet? Uh, you know, true, just true, true years in the gym, true, true wins, true losses, true life. I just realized that if you say it to yourself and you look yourself in the eye and look yourself in the mirror and truly, truly believe that not a man alive can beat you, then that, that is the way it is. And, and just true, true hours in the gym and preparation, I feel that I am untouchable right now. That's awesome. Thank you. And keep taking those. Thank hats. you, sir. Thank you. Go ahead. Hey, Connor. I'm a big fan. Uh, there's a lot of people out there in my country and my cousin sitting over there that are non-believers. Can you please let them know how you're going to take out Jose Aldo? What is your country, first of all? Uh, Guatemala. Nice. Right, nice. Yeah, you know, there is, it's an educational process with people. I feel nobody, they didn't believe me when I showed up. It was UFC caliber, and then, then I go through the UFC caliber, and then it was the striker, and then it was the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt, then it was the top ten. It's a, it's a process, you know, so they will... They will all bow eventually, you mark my words. Thank you. Uh, hi, Connor. Just uh, we've come over from Scotland for the fight six, uh, my friends and I. And uh, myself and my friend Ryan, the jockey Boyle, last night were uh, sitting thinking before we fight on a Saturday night, we normally have 10 pints of lager and a donor kebab. What do you have, Connor? I have no idea what he even said. That sounds like a good time, yeah? Before I fight, on what, on the Friday? Yeah. You know, after making weight, I would love, to, make no mistake, I would love to have 10 points and a donut kebab before I fight, but it will definitely hamper my performance. So I must, especially after making weight, I must be clean. And uh, usually Friday night, I just have a nice big steak, go to a big steakhouse and, and eat, eat clean. But then after it, 10 points and a, and a donut kebab, yeah? Nice hat. Connor, how you doing, brother? My name's Diami from New York City. Awesome to talk to you, man. Thank you so much. Awesome. So, in, in the Chinese Zodiac, 2015 is the year of the goat. So, being that it's your year, I can't wait to see you smash wow. Jose in the summer, bro. That's an interesting one, because I am, set, make no mistake, I'm setting up to be the greatest of all time. Are, I am working towards it, and I will, be, I will go down as the greatest of all time. So, for that, is it really 2015, the year of the goat? It, it was is. meant to be. There you go, brother. Thanks, man. Hey, Connor. Uh, another guy from Scotland here. I've read that um, Josie Aldo's low kicks are more powerful because he used to play soccer when he was young. I was wondering if you ever played soccer and if you're a fan of Glasgow Celtic. Yeah, I, I used to play soccer. Soccer, football was a, was a big thing, like most boys around Ireland, Scotland, England. It's a big part of culture. Um, and of course I'm a fan of, of Celtic, you know, but uh, I, I think that's, that's misconstrued, you know. Your, lo your kicks are stronger because you play football, you know. Your kicks are stronger because you practice kicking. Um, but yeah. When did you stop playing soccer? When I realized it was a little, it was for women, you know, I, I would rather fight. Go ahead. Hey, what's up, Connor? Man, you have really good striking, you know, you throw a lot of good striking techniques. So tell me what's your, like, 
favorite striking technique to throw, like your go-to? Every, every time I feel there's something, something new, you know, I suppose my go-to, I don't really have a go-to. Like your favorite thing to throw, you know what I mean? To really hurt. I would it. love to land that spinning hook kick. Okay. I feel it's coming. It was cleaner this time than it was again in the Poirier fight. I'm getting better each time, I feel. Nice. With Dennis, he was hunched over. He was a left-sided fighter. And when you fight a left-sided fighter, you have that lean, so the kick goes over. Whereas more if you fight the right-sided fighter, similar to Ronaldo or, or even Brandao, he was more right, heavy with that right hand. They walk into that spinning hook kick. And I feel I'm getting cleaner and cleaner and cleaner with So one day I would love to catch someone flush with the heel to the chin. Cool. Okay, thanks. Connor, what's up, man? Hello, sir. All right, two things. Uh, I know the UFC is with uh, Reebok, but would you ever consider going with Nike since Anderson Silva is the greatest of all time, and you just said you're going to be the greatest of all time? Greatest of all time with Nike. I think it'd be a good fit. And number two, I saw you give Seaver the finger last time. Are you going to give Aldo the finger or touch gloves? Um, stop. You're trying to take money out of my pocket now. I'm with Reebok. Make no mistake, Reebok is the premier brand around here. I'm bringing Reebok back. We're going to have to talk afterwards. Great answer. But uh, as far as the stick my finger up, uh, you know, when it's time to fight, it's time to fight. Through all the bullshit that gets said and through all touch gloves and let's do it. Now it's time to, to see who was right. Let's see who was talking sense. Let's see who was talking truth. And he did not touch my glove, so I stuck my finger up at him. He is the guy that was abusing steroids, not me. You know, he was the cheat. Um, that got this big opportunity that he probably did not deserve, so he didn't touch my gloves, so I stuck my finger up at him, you know what I mean? Wh whatever, it, it is what it is. Good luck, man. Everyone is so dressed up today. I should have worn a suit, right? I know, I feel underdressed, jeez. I kept it was a sporty, I was only out of bed. What's happening to Toyers? Hello, sir. Good. Looking good, looking good, that's a nice tie. I try, my man, I try. Hey, listen, not as sharp as you, though. Anyhow, you are the Eddie Murphy of, of MMA, man. You, like, you truly are the freaking Eddie Murphy, man. And you back it up. I appreciate that. Um, follow me on Twitter, man. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny Alpha Lion. So I could DM with you and, and, and uh, you know. You can become be bros. Fuck yeah. Have a beer. Fuck yeah. Fuck Let's yeah. do it. Talk right. about ties. Hey, stay ready, bro. Stay ready. So much. Was that the whole thing? All right. <laughs> What's going on, Connor? <laughs> Question. So you kind of mentioned it earlier about uh, Jose's legs kicks being overrated. If it was anything that most people took from that last fight was that your front leg was wide open and that yeah. that would be a way that he could pick you apart. Is there anything that you're going to do to change that? And also, when you hopped out the cage and you got in his face and he didn't react to you at all, how was that? Um, you think he didn't react, but I could feel a reaction. If he didn't react, then where the fuck was he when we were supposed to face off in the octagon? It was a superstition. I wanted to look him dead in the eye. It was done. I was done with Dennis. I wanted to put that energy right through Jose's chest and look him dead in the eye. So that was it. He should have taken the opportunity to, to respond back, but he went running. He was superstitious. He does not get in the cage unless he ha has a fight. But superstitions is another word for fear, to make no mistake about it. Good luck. I actually want to ask you a question. There's a, a picture that everyone's seen now when you came over to Jose's section in the audience, and there's like a, a little girl between you guys. Who is that? It was, a it was a fucked up scene, yeah? <laughs> I jumped over the cage, adrenaline going, and I, I seized his little skinny Brazilian head, and I'm running for him. And then I, that little girl was actually my little niece. Oh. My niece from Ireland, so I was like, what the? And then my girlfriend was there. It was just a weird, I don't know what was going on, to be honest. <laughs> Your emotions are going crazy. I was just screaming at, at him, but um, my niece seemed to love it. She was like, <laughs> she was just looking up laughing. It was a weird one, all right, but fuck it, it is what it is. <laughs> hey, Connor. Hi. I'm Hello. friends from uh, Montreal. That's why I have a big uh, French accent. Uh, oui, oui. I really enjoy watching you fight, man, by the way. Uh, we all know here that you're always very uh, arrogant with your opponent, very cocky. 
So you do, do you think you will be a more humble man after you lose against Jose Aldo? Never! It will because be it never will happen. You. I'm gonna smoke him, trust me. Every time there's a new guy, this is a new question. When I, I whoop him and make it look easy, yeah, you will have nothing to say. I'm gonna smoke him, trust me. And then I'm gonna be extra cocky thinking of you. <laughs> Thank you, man. I still want an autograph if I see you. Go ahead. Hello, Connor. My name is Jordan. I'm from Newfoundland, Canada. I'm a huge... Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. All right, Canada. Anyways, anyways, I'm a huge fan. You're a huge inspiration to me. But, hey, 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 hey. Anyways, what I wanted to ask you was, how come you have such a focus on anatomical movement, like such as the human movement? Like, you, you've been quoted saying before, you have a PhD in human movement. He's a gorilla. He's a gorilla. You study, you study animal movement. You've, you've also been quoted saying that. Why do you find that so beneficial to you? And, and how do you find that separates you from the rest? Um, I think, I think in MMA fell into a pattern, you know. Every, every style is a style. Boxing is, it has its certain movements. Kickboxing has its certain movements and its certain approach. And MMA originally was designed to, to be free, to, to, to use them all, but it fell into a pattern of a certain uh, stance, a certain um, approach to training. And I feel it became about lifting weights and training heavy, heavy rounds. But for me, I, I, I was not interested in that, you know. At the end of the day, the brain is what makes the body move right and move left. So you must, you must nurture that. Um, and it's not about lifting heavy weights and sparring, sparring hard. It's about freeing the body, being loose, being flexible, having, having great balance. That is what the, that's the basis of what martial arts is about. So that, that is what, what I am doing. And I am just trying to learn every way that the human body can move. And I, am only, I, I truly feel I am only a white belt in the, in, in the broad spectrum of movement. But my competitors have yet to even begin, I feel. And I think that's a, that's a real champion's mentality right there. Thank you so much. Thank you. I actually want to ask you a question off that. Today I got a tweet from a U.S. Olympic gold medalist in gymnastics, Dominique Muccianu, and she wanted to know, because you're so interested in movement, have you ever thought of making gymnastics a key component? We saw guys like GSP really focusing on gymnastics. Is that something that interests you? Yeah, I feel you must train everything, but without getting... I, don't, I never think it's a good thing to become obsessed with one style of training. Now, you see that a lot. If, if I was to give a comparison, I would look at the Cub Swanson, Frankie Edgar fight. I felt personally Cub fell in love with boxing. I was walking out to the contest with boxing coaches. He became a boxer. And his other disciplines fell short. That is what happens to a lot of people. Even if you look at George St. Pierre, I feel... He was doing gym gymnastics maybe two times a week, and don't get me wrong, gymnastics is phenomenal. The, I mean, the strength and control they have over their body is absolutely phenomenal. But you must not get addicted, or you must not get obsessed with one particular style. You must be, you must continue to be free because there are there are pros and cons to to every uh, single approach to training. Whereas gy gymnastics are phenomenal, but they bounce, they bounce on. Um, it's like a springboard. It's like a springboard. So they actually lose some of their bounce through, through training on that. Um, so that's why it's important to, to mix it around. So I, I, looked at, I have trained gymnastics before. Um, it is great fun. And it, 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 it's powerful, controlled power. Um, but I look to just train in absolutely everything. I'm open to training in anything. And I, and I always do. Nice. All right, go ahead. Yeah, how you doing? Uh, I just want to ask... Uh, I just want to say, hey, I just want to, you look really good in the last fight in the octagon, and uh, you're a really composed fighter. And uh, I just wanted to ask, what were your, what was going through your mind, and what was your intentions jumping that, going back to jumping that fence, going, charging Jose Aldo, man? Yeah, I just, I looked around, and I seen him. He was floating around the, the hotel. He had this little stupid poster. He put on this little cheap king suit. The thing looked like it was worth about $5 max. He looked ridiculous. So I was seeing this happen during fight week, and then I seen his little skinny Brazilian head. The fight was done. 
the emotions took over. I bounced over the cage and I just started screaming at him. I just wanted to put that energy right through his chest. Let him know, now it's his time. Now, now, it's, now your time is up. Yeah. That's right. Hey, forget what everybody says, man. I got you. I got you over Jose, and you're going to take it, baby. Don't thank worry you about so what, much. Don't worry about what anybody says. You got this. I never do, but thank you. How you doing, Connor? Quick, two quick questions. Uh, for fighters who have got cracked, like you cracked Dustin Poirier, like you cracked Dennis Seaver, like you cracked Marcus Brimage, do you think they can ever recover from that? Kind of like Anderson Silva, you know, when he got cracked by Weidman. No offense. Do you think he can recover from that after they've been, their chin has been, you know? You know, you only have, that's why I've said, this is a short, short game. That's why my motto, get in, get rich, get out. This is, this is the game we are in. You only have so many smacks you can take. You only have so many five-round wars that you can take. And that's why, that's why I feel so confident going in there against Jose. He's had many five-round wars. He hasn't finished a fight in a long time. It's been consistent shots to the head. And then you look at his training uh, approach. It's heavy, heavy sparring. It's no head guard. I, that's why I spoke on deterioration. And that is why I feel confident that when I go in and I crack him, it will be done. It's the same way with them all. They, like I said, it's, it's too much focus on heavy sparring, too much focus on the grind, whereas it should be about being free and being loose and flexibility, balance, control, speed. These are the fundamentals of martial arts and this is what I am working towards and that's why I feel I am at the next level or, or I am on my way to that next level. And, and one more thing, I like, I'd like to make a little prediction for your fight against Aldo. At the end of the bout, the referee has stopped this contest. 20 seconds into the first round, your winner, and new UFC featherweight champion, the notorious Conor McGregor! Yeah! I'll tell you what, you're hired, yeah? Get that man a job. That's a great note to end it on. Unfortunately, we have to wrap it up, but what a way to wrap it up. Guys, don't forget, July 11th, UFC 189, right here at the MGM Grand International Fight Week. Conor McGregor versus Thank Jose Thank you so Aldo. much, everybody. Have Thanks, a great guys. weekend, and I'll see you tomorrow.